Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast. Podcast number 162. I'm your host, David Palermo. And on the line with us today is Kevin Maceri from Lockdown Bills. Kevin, you want to say hello just real quick? Hey, guys. What's going on? Yeah, see, that was great, Kevin. Thank you. So, don't forget... Follow along on Grand Sand Sports Network where you can check out the Lockdown Bills franchise along with the other Lockdown Sports franchise podcasts like Lockdown Spurs. If you're into the Spurs, they got a Lockdown Spurs. You should check it out. And it's pretty cool. But check out GrandStandSportsNetwork.com and you can find other sports podcasts that you like along the way that are played all the way through the day. Also, they have like pretty much like a, a Buffalo segment where they play back-to-back-to-back podcasts just about Buffalo sports, which is pretty sweet. So also, don't forget to check out, if you like the Sabres, Beyond the Blade podcast, they're also on Grandstand Sports Network. So shoot them a follow. And lastly, Punch Drunk Sports, Ari Shafir, Jason Tebow, who we've had on our podcast, and Sam Tripoli as well. Follow them along, Punch Drunk Sports, at Punch Drunk on Twitter, Instagram, and wherever. Great sports podcast, unfiltered from comedians. You know what you're getting. It gets dirty, it gets wild, and it's really organic and fun. And great sports take. So if you want to talk, you know, maybe GSP and who his next fight should be, will Conor McGregor fight again, whatever it might be, I'm sure they'll talk about it. So they usually update around Tuesday to Wednesday, so check them out, Punch Drunk Sports. And um, right now on the line, as I said earlier, we have Kevin Masseri. From Lockdown Bills, so the ads are all done. If you don't subscribe, just podcast to the podcast. Please do iTunes, wherever you find it. Instagram, Twitter, you can follow along on Facebook too. So, um, Kevin, I had a question for you, and it's a big Patriots week coming up. You know, a couple days, Bills play the Patriots, and it's just dreaded. And as a Bills fan, we kind of just... For me, it's like, great. You just crossed two games off the schedule, you know? Um, so, I had this idea for a segment. And I called you up, and I told you it, and you kind of said you'd play along. And the idea for the segment is pretty much the Bills beat the Patriots because. So, are you going to follow along with me, Kevin? And then I'll tell you my garbage, and then you could... Agree, disagree, and and or run the snowball down the mountain. You want to play that one? Sure. Okay. We can play that. Yeah, we'll play it that way. We'll play it that way. Okay. So, the Bills, I thought about this for a few days. The Bills will beat the Patriots because, number one, they knocked Brady around. Number two, they played the Patriots game, which is start running those rub routes, start running those pick routes, start hitting a quarterback early. Start doing whatever the Patriots will do. That way, hopefully, it's a level playing field. Because it's kind of weird on a side note. I see the matchup, and I'm like, oh, Patriots. Man, I wonder who the ref crew is. Like, I shouldn't think about that. Anyways, but I do. So, and then, uh, if the as stupid as this sounds, if the Bills can run the ball, which Kevin will get into if they can or not, uh, and if the Bills can stop the run, which I think they can, I think... You just lay Brady out, hit after hit after hit after hit. Because the way I look at it is the guy is never going to die, and not for nothing. They're going to get flagged the Bills for something stupid. See the EJ Gaines play. It doesn't matter. Tom's going to get the calls regardless. So one thing you can do is rattle the guy, and that is the common theme to the Patriots going down. So I think that... (laughs) <laughs> Excuse me. On a side note, I don't know if you want to overly try to confuse Tom Brady on defense. Like that would be cool, but like I don't know if it's really possible. Um, but the Lorenzo Alexander changeup, I would like to get into today as well, Kevin. Um, he did some very interesting things against the Chiefs, and we saw him rushing the passer. He wasn't on the field as much. But there were some interesting things. So, essentially, to review, I think if you knock Brady down, boom, boom. You run the ball, stop the run, boom, boom. And you play the Patriots' dirty tricks first. And I know it sounds like they won't, obviously. But try their shit. Because then maybe if they try it, they'll get flagged. I don't know. 
Um, I can't tell you how many times we just see guys coming out uh, out of the Patriots offense just wide open. You replay the play, and oh well, that's not really a legal way to do it, and it's a pick, you know. So it is what it is. We've seen refs use as picks, but I'm not gonna sit here and moan anymore about it. So as I look at it, the Bills just gotta not get in their own way, frankly, and control they can control. And really, if you could turn these field goals into touchdowns for one game, maybe just have an anomaly, that would be great. You know, really get out ahead. But I've seen the Bills ahead of the Patriots many times and think, how are they going to blow this? So, I'll take it to you, Kevin. What do you think? I think it starts with getting pressure up the middle on Tom Brady. There's no really other way to beat him. Um, you need him. He's at his worst when his offensive line banged up. You have an offensive line this week that's without, you know, their starting right tackle and Marcus Cannon. They're missing Le- uh, LeAndre Waddell, which is like one of their better reserve tackles, like their version of Deion Dawkins. Um, David Andrews, like their 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 decent center, is fighting an illness. Um, so they they have some, you know, slight injuries there on the offensive line. That you saw him actually get to Brady last week. The Dolphins did a little bit as a bad snap from their backup center. Uh, you saw a lot of different things happen on the field. So it starts with right there getting pressure up the middle on Brady. I mean, you need him, you need him to make bad and errant throws, and you got to get ahead of it. They don't ever lose when they're winning. Um, they don't, you don't ever come back on them often. So although they do come back on you, you still there's no other way but to get ahead. If you, if you go behind seven ten, I mean, it's just it's 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 not going to happen. Yeah, it's like they they run very. I don't know. They're, they're very they're a very safe team. It always seems year in, year out. And um, somehow, as far as like turnovers and I can't figure the Patriots out because, you know, you can give me just about any year and I'll be like, man, you know, I really, I really like that. You know, like how can I, it's kind of like, I really like this team going out the Patriots, uh, up against the Patriots. I, I can't really say that this year. You know what I mean? Like, I can't really find something from this team that I could recognize that the Bills do great to go up against the Patriots and be like, man, I really can buy it that they're going to win, you know? And I don't know. This year I just don't know what the Bills do well, and I almost think that, okay, if I had to talk myself into a victory, maybe the fact that the Bills don't even know what they do well, Belichick ain't even going to know what they do well. So the Bills could be at an advantage. It's almost like playing them early in the season. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. I don't, I just don't really, I don't know. I'm so confused, you know, because you can stop Tyrod Taylor that, that's been out. At the same time, now that his head has been rattled, is he the same guy? Because people are saying he is, but they're just looking at the stat line. They're not looking at his head, what he's doing, that he's actually looking guys off now, you know, like they're, people just want to see what they want to see. So, um, I don't know, Kevin, what do you think? Do you think it's, am I making any sense here? Yeah, you're making sense. I just, I think it's just a impossible matchup that there's, you know, I, I don't see many ways to win this one. I mean, you're going to need a, another two or three turnover performance and that just doesn't happen often in new England. Happened last week against the Dolphins for them. Um, I just don't see it happening back to back weeks, and they still won by thirty. So um, I really just don't see a lot of hope. Uh, it's going to take a really great effort moving the ball. I think Tyrod Taylor needs to throw the ball uh, a lot more than I. I don't think they win the game, even if they do. You know that they've only had two hundred yard rushers against New England since Brady's been playing, C.J. Spiller and Willis McGahee. Really? So, so like they're they're, they're not going to run the ball. They're going to take away McCoy. You're going to have to beat them through the air, 100%. I don't even think running the ball is a key to this game. Well, I don't know what to tell you, man. So if... Do you think the Bills have any shot at running the ball in your eyes or what? Because they're going to try. And that's the thing that I worry about is they're going to try. And they're going to try the same predictable shit over... And over. And it's like we're recognizing now the plays that go bad. 
We're like, man, we've seen this. And you kind of like look it up or you hear somebody talk about it. Yeah, they ran that play four times. And it's, it's not at uh, negative two yards. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, let's keep... I just don't think they'll be able to run it. They need to come out. They need to con- They need to run a quick throwing offense. I mean, I just I don't think they should come out and try to pound the rock. That's what Bill Belichick's going to stop. They're going to take that away. Do you think they'll get away with play action or do you think they'll be – just waiting on it. Because uh, you know what I mean? mean I, I think you have to be honest to the run, right? You have to keep yeah. trying. I mean, to an extent. I mean, you can't you can't go three and out because you're trying to be greedy. Um, I just think you go out and throw the ball. I mean, I think that that's really the only shot you saw with Deshaun Watson um, when they played the Texans. I, I, I really think it, it's going to take a, an effort where you're – you're going to commit to the pass game. And, you know, that's really the only way to keep up with Tom Brady. And if you get a lead, then, yeah, you can transition to a run game if for some reason it goes your way. But, um, you know, it's, it's going to, you're going to have to keep pace and you're not going to be able to follow up seven points with a field goal or three and outs. I would love to see more of a, um, a, a, spread, a spread offense, um, say even with, with, with Clay and three receivers. Um, and, you know, have LaShawn in the backfield and work some, you know, that, that play action off there just to, just to get the defensive guys, keep them on their toes a little bit, you know, and try to throw out of there, you know, just dictate, come out that way. The bills have not come out really running. Like I'm picturing like a chain gaily offense here. You follow me? Yeah, I'm following you. And, and mix that in with that whole Kaepernick read option thing that they've been doing. You know, where, like, the running back is behind you as a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So, um, because you have it, – it's something that we've seen that, that kind of read option deal work with Tyrod Taylor so well and LaShawn McCoy so well. They have a good feel together, a chemistry together. And that, at the same time, might get a guy open because they have to think about that. And that's something that the Bills haven't done. And then Belichick's got to adjust on the fly. You know, it's like – I would really – you went to camp. You saw a bunch of different things. Do you, know, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just weird. It's just yeah. weird. I, I want to see them be more aggressive. Like, come out throwing to set up the run. Soften exactly. them up. I agree with you. I, I mean, that's that's definitely something that they need. That's what I mean. They need to start throwing the ball. They need to open up space for the running game. And it starts with throwing the ball first, not running it first. So – um, I, I'd like to see a transition to a, go out and try to go out swinging. That's what I want to see. I want to see him go out swinging. If they lose, still lose by 14, then so be it. I want to see him come out swinging. I want to see him throwing the ball. I want to see him try their best to keep up with the Patriots in the offensive side of the ball and, and really try to lean on their defense to do a couple of things. I think that's what this game takes. If you're, if you're going to go out and run the ball, you mean 100 yards rushing, great. I mean, you're not going to win. What do you think about... Um, Tavares Cadet in this offense. What you what you've seen from him? I I, I will say my thoughts on him is I I've said it before. Um, he he lays the he lays he lays the wood kind of like Adrian Peterson, but he can he has like way better hands and can move. He's got really disgusting vision, like. Like our favorite part about Fred Jackson is he didn't really move too fast, but he damn he got to the right spots. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. He he's Yeah, I like I like the dad. I think he's a really good backup running back. I think he's who you're looking for on third down. He gives you a little bit more than even Taiwan Jones did and um and he's better than Mike Tolbert. So I I I think that's a good player to have on your team. I don't know that he's a great number two running back i mean he's he's got 100 career rushing yards dave um he's a good third down back i mean he's definitely not an answer in, in the running game though he's gonna be an answer in the receiving game i'm looking for more versatility and it's like for the play calls that they're calling with mike tolbert and i'm taking the attributes of this player and plugging him into the things that mike tolbert should not be asked to execute again it's not his fault we go over it all the time but that's the plays that are called. This guy seems to execute those plays a lot better than Mike Tolbert. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like what I'm looking for in the Bills is 
Yeah, I really liked Percy Harvin. Why? Because he was versatile. He could do a lot of things. And if Cadet has primarily been a receiver most of his career, I think that's an awesome thing to have him on the roster. And why not give, give him some carries? See what can happen. Because what we've been seeing on second down, third down, with other running backs has not been working. And even first down has been a bust. Like, I... I I can't tell you how many second and longs the Bills have been in this year. It's got to be like a record-setting year for that. Like, some of the most abominable plays I've ever seen on first down are from the Bills. So, I don't know. So, what about the offensive line for the Bills? Um, How have they been looking? Has there been any improvement, really? I haven't really targeted you to ask you that lately, but... um, Do they do anything superior? Is there something you can say that they can build off of something? Yeah, I mean, you have um, a running game that's been struggling to me. I mean, I just, you have Vlad Dukas playing a little bit better. Um, He was, and and okay, he was okay. And, you know, you have Dan Dawkins, who who actually is probably playing better than an injured Cordy Glenn is right right now. You were solid last game. Richie's decent, as always. You know, Eric Wood can be up and down. Jordan Mills is a run of the mills. Um, you know, he can be okay at times. He's not quite as bad as people think. Um, people like to – he's not great in pass pro, um, and he can struggle in zone run blocking, but he does keep the quarterback clean. He doesn't allow a ton of hurries. He can get crushed by speed rushers, but holds his own against physical, uh, physical defensive ends, so – He's not, he's not playing terrible football. They, they do have some depth there. I mean, it's a position of depth to me. I mean, you have Groy, you have Miller, you have uh, Henderson. You have a, you have a bunch of I, – I do like the talent there. You have Dawkins coming on, uh, Glenn potentially coming back at some point either this year or to start next year. So um, you don't have to do a lot to that unit. I mean, it's playing okay football. Well, I don't know where to – we're just staying with any of the offensive line because, you know, I like to watch what goes on and sometimes I get caught up just staring at the ball and then I look up and I see like Dukas getting up off the carpet after McCoy tripped him, tripped over him. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, Dukas is kind of clumsy, but believe it or not, he do- why he's in the lineup is he does what he's supposed to be doing. That's like, you know, it's kind of like, your version or anyone's version of a teacher's pet, you know, kind of someone that is doing the right things is following the rules is following what the coach asks of him. He's just not a great football player, but always is going to play hard and play decent football. Um, there's stretches where I'm like, all right, that was a good play by Dukas. It was a good pull. Uh, he made the right zone block. Um, but there's, there's other times and he's just not good enough. Is, um, how does Richie Incognito and Eric Wood look as far as and, and Jordan Mills as far as adjusting to the zone blocking? I mean, I wouldn't say any of them are particularly b- suited for it. I mean, Miller, John Miller definitely isn't. He played terrible and probably won't see the field again in Buffalo. I bet he's traded or cut. Um, but is a talented guard that I would hold on to for depth purposes. Uh, I mean, Richie's still 14th guard ranked in the league, so he's not top five like he was, but he's okay at it. I mean, he's transitioning. Um, did has done pretty decent. You know, Vlad Dukas is sitting at 33rd, 33rd ranked guard in the league, which is just sitting right solid smack in the middle. So he's not going to be – he's not as bad as people want to make him out to be, honestly. Um, right. And then you have, you know, Eric Wood, who's just 14th ranked center. He's been playing a little bit better of late. Um, play actually playing a little better than last year, so he's okay. Um, he gave him an extension. He's here for a couple more years. Um, so I mean, I, I I think that the offensive line's in okay shape. I mean, it's it's nowhere near perfect. It's not quite the step I thought they'd make. Um, but you know, they're another guy that's interesting is Adam Redman, a center on their practice squad that they got out to come over um, from Indianapolis, I believe. Uh, he's a guy you could see come up at the end of this year here if there's any injuries or any reason, but. You know, he's a guy that fares really well in pass block in his own scheme. So he's another name to watch out for. But other than that, I mean, you have, you know, Eric Wood just playing, you know, pretty decent run of the mill average football. And then I know you asked about Mills. Um, yeah. He's 46th ranked out of 80 uh, qualifying. So he's another guy kind of smack dab in the middle. 
Um, and is this all pro football focus ranks? Yeah, these are all pro football focus rankings. So okay. Jordan Mills is actually a guy that actually, if, if you can believe it, um, he was in the top half of the league, top third of the league in, run, uh, in pass blocking. Um, so he, he does play pretty well in pass, uh, pass block, but is toward the bottom of the league in run block. No shit. So you, it's interesting. He, a lot of people like to point to him when he's, you know, maybe lets up a play or sack, but he's actually fairly decent in, in, in well, pass pro. Well, my fan instinct to me is like, God damn it, you keep running, running to the right side. You got to stop that. And then I'm like, wait, they ran a good one to that side. So it's like, you know, I kind of just, that's what I'm asking. I, I, I'm just like, <sighs> I, I'm still trying to talk myself. Usually by now on Thursday, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Bills got a chance. And I was like, dude, you're like, what paint fumes are you huffing? Is usually what people look at me with when I say that. You know, and it's like, I'm trying to look forward to something with the Bills right now. You know, I want to be, I want to have some kind of things to look at when I'm watching the Bills and the Patriots. Because I think there is a thing to playing up to your talent level. And I think the Bills can We've seen the Bills do certain things right, and I thought the Bills tackled a lot better. So let's work again. So we talked about the trenches primarily here. Um, On the defensive line for the Bills, what do you see? How do you see this working up against a, it sounds like some missing pieces allegedly, Patriots offensive line because we don't know what to trust with them. Right. So what, what yeah, do you I mean, see with this defensive right line? Dave, Dave, I mean, the Patriots defensive line? Oh, uh, Bills. Um, oh, the Bills defensive line. Uh, I mean, going up against the Patriots O line. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they've been playing better. The Bills, that's a unit I can point to playing. I mean, the Bills O line, when you ask, they're playing a little bit better, but nothing really to, right. um, to really chime in on. Are they getting, comes, the, the O line isn't getting worse. Right. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Miller, Miller was. That's why he got benched. Um, I would say everyone's at least staying steady or, or okay. improving a improving a touch. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, that's that's where you're going to get. A, you've got absolutely after those three terrible games, you've got a little bit better play out of their interior D line. I mean, Kyle Williams is actually only ranked 61st in, uh, defensive interior player out of uh, qualifying 118. So he's dead smack dab in the middle. Um, it sucks to say. Adolphus Washington is kind of at the bottom of the league. Right, he's 116th ranked, um, which is just brutally low, brutal, brutally low. Um, actually, does okay. And believe it or not, he has a good coverage rank. Um, Who Adolphus? Yeah. Okay. So you know when they have him like drop back, you know he's good at that. You know he's he's okay in pass rush. I mean he just can be terrible in run stop. That's why you're you're seeing you know Cedric Thornton get a little bit more time in pass rush too, 68.8 ranking. Um, so Cedric's getting to the quarterbacks a little bit. Still, he's actually terrible in in, in in run stop too. Him and him and Adolphus are really bad in run stop. But you know, really, really the goal is to put put Kyle in the game. And what about pure, Coleman? What about Coleman? Coleman Coleman has like limited uh, limited statistics to go off of. But I think he's what about against the run though? You know what I mean? Because that first week. You can't expect the guy to come in off the goddamn couch. Right. You know what I mean? And, and be productive. And it's like, if you want to talk about a team being together and liking what you got, well, you don't pull up guys off the couch if your team's together depth-wise. So, well, <laughs> Coleman, week two, I thought he was solid against, against the Chiefs. I mean, come on, man. Kareem Hunt did nothing. Yeah, I, I like DeAndre Coleman. I thought he was a great move to call him up and cut worthy um so I, I think he's he's played fairly well i mean he only has three tackles uh, in two games but he goes in on pure pure rundowns because then you bring in thornton or Adolphus on, on, on i on, just uh, think with, with, with coleman it's a bigger body he's a big mass and that gives at least somebody to pay attention to so kyle williams can do his thing because removing russell darius is just sending kyle into retirement you know, yeah. it's like unless they spend a really high draft pick or get somebody to play next to Kyle, because I'll be honest, I think Kyle loves just playing football. And if this team ends up eight and eight, I could see Kyle Williams playing again. Honestly, I don't. 
maybe, I, maybe eight and eight, maybe nine and seven. Uh, maybe he could be convinced, but I, I literally, I do not see many, any more than one more year. Okay. Because, you know, I look at the 61st rank of Kyle Williams and if you want to be objective, maybe if he didn't have Darius, it, his career wouldn't be as long, right? Right. At the same time, Kyle Williams is still, to, from my eye, one of the fastest guys off the ball I see in any game I watch. So, I don't know. I, I just... And, and Kevin, I'm, I'm talking, like, across the league, Thanksgiving, like, Kyle Williams... First, I mean, we talked about it last podcast together that, you know, he, you don't think he is what he, what he was, and you, we're not slighting him. It's just the truth, you know. At the same time, I have to take in schematics because we know, like, Richie Incognito, here I am just being a fan apologist here. No, nah, he's not getting old. He's defying age, man. No, Kyle Williams is not getting old. But it's like, you know, I, I just, if you look at Incognito's rank for a guard, well, schematically, they change to something that doesn't fit, and he's still holding his own overall. You you follow me? So it's like, I expect Kyle Williams to be down to 61. I, you know, like, not not down to 61 in ranking, but maybe, maybe down in, like, the 30s, right? But I don't know. I just don't think that they've had anything really worthwhile it's like these units up front they they just gotta play so well together and especially in the offensive side of the ball and the defense side of the ball is more you, you can improvise more but damn you gotta have some help right you gotta have some chemistry with the person next to you and I, 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 do, I feel bad for him you know, yeah, he, I mean, I, I think he could be utilized as a guy, as a team's like third or fourth best offense, uh, defensive lineman, you know, playing with a couple of good defensive ends or another good defensive tackle. But um, him and Jerry, so you really have two marquee guys and then a couple of other decent players. Yeah, he, you know, he isn't in the greatest situation in the world, but they're still playing okay football there. What do you think about Shaq Lawson? I think he's going to have a breakout game coming up at some point. I think he's a good football player. What's been going on? Why are people so quick to shit on him? Because uh, for me... Um, I don't know. Just why are they quick to do anything? I mean, he's one of the best run-stopping defensive ends in the league. I mean, he's top maybe 20. Hmm. Those players that... I'll be sitting in the stadium, right? And there might be like an old guy behind me. And he'll go, man, where's Mario Williams? <laughs> like, this is why Mario Williams is on the team. Haven't heard him. What's your use done lately? And it's like, yeah, I'm sure these guys forgot how to play football, dude. You know what I mean? Like, kind of watch your effort. Granted, we saw the Mario Williams show. But, People think that defensive ends only sack quarterbacks. They do like... <sighs> Ten, they do like a million different things. You know who I liked on the Bills was Sean Merriman. <laughs> and I'm going to get so much flack. But like, that dude could set the edge all right. Like I thought. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, Yeah, dude, he was he was playing without two legs, though. <laughs> I know. He just didn't have the right HGH yet. That's all. Yeah. He's got to get on Tom Brady's shit and come back, man. Like, I was stoked. I was really stoked for that guy. But, hey, man. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, man, like, what, what is, what, when I was finding out, because I guess things have changed up defensively, um, you know, when they're talking about McDermott's scheme being traditionally in cover three, I just think, like, great, Tom Brady is going to pick this apart, and I think he can pick this defense apart. Yep, um, and will yep he's very good against zone defenses unlike alex smith who generally struggles against zone defenses right and Derek carr struggles against zone defenses uh trevor simeon struggles against zone defenses uh but you have tom brady who will he will gladly give you six or seven yard pass plays if, you, if you're going to give it to him like yeah i just you, you gotta hit the guy you gotta really hit the guy um right. 
It sounds like Chris Hogan is out of the game, right? Yep. Brandon they put Martellus Bennett on IR. Okay. Brandon Cooks and Tom Brady. I cannot believe what they've been doing. Yeah, I mean, him going out against uh, Hogan getting injured is the best thing that's ever happened for Cooks. I mean, he's been just a stud. Yeah, and it's like, is Trey White going to be able to handle that guy? Because he's going to probably follow him. I think so. He matches up pretty good skill set wise. Um, he's not going to be your big physical imposing. He's going to be a, a speed burner, and I think that's, um, I think that'll be okay for for Trey. So, how do you do? You see Trey White? Where does Trey White match up? Because, man, that kid has stepped up. I love watching him play. I'm very stoked for him. Um, you know, it's been rough with some big plays on him, but his performance the other night, taking the chance on the ball, being in the right spot, studying the film, knowing where to be. I mean, good anticipation. Sealed the game. Just absolutely sealed the game. Yep. And that's what we want to see is we, we want to see an impatient Tom Brady. Yep. You know what I let me Let me rant about the DBs real quick. We've talked about everything else. Yeah. Um, EJ Gaines. Give me some difference maker, games, man. Love. He's a difference maker in the zone. Um, we'll start. We'll start at the top with the five safeties. and two with EJ Gaines playing, right? Yep. Okay. So if you start at the, if you start at the top with the safety play, you have eighty six point nine ranked Micah Hyde, who's eleventh in the league, and eighty four point three ranked Jordan Player, who's fifteenth in the league. Um, both do a little bit different things. Both have been phenomenal in coverage. Uh, Micah has been great in run D. Uh, Jordan struggled a little bit in run defense um, during that three-game stretch. His score is a little lower, but top two top 15 safeties are going to help you win football games. Uh, and they're virtually playing every single snap. Here and there, you'll see Elston go in, uh, who's also okay in coverage, um, but he's been terrible in runs. He's a liability in run stop is Trey Elston. So if any of them miss time, uh, the 36 snaps Trey Elston spent at the, in the run defense category, he's one of the lowest-ranked safeties but outside of that, I mean, you're getting tons of minutes out of Ployer and Hyde. They've been phenomenal. Uh, it was the weakest unit in the Bills last year. It's now the strongest. Uh, switching over to cornerback, I mean, you got just tons of good cornerback play for the, the league being offensively focused. Sharice Wright was easily the weakest link. He sucks. Um, he's pretty, pretty terrible. Good special teamer when he needs to be and can fill in in, in a minute or in a bind, um, but actually – uh, wasn't very good, but outside of that, you talk about their, their three main guys who are getting a ton of time in White, Gaines, and Johnson. Um, each of them in their respective areas. Trey White's a top seven. He's seventh ranked at 89. EJ Gaines is 30th ranked at 81. Leonard Johnson's 56th ranked at 76.6. Um, all, you know, you have Gaines and uh, Leonard Johnson, which is phenomenal. Wait a second, defense. wait a second, wait a second. So, like, White is a top what cornerback? Seven. He's seventh ranked in the NFL. EJ Gaines is what rank? Thirty first. And Johnson? Uh Johnson is fifty fifty six. Now didn't Johnson show more promise, I thought, earlier in the year? Or am I losing my mind? Because mm. I thought there was a guy that would come in or was it? Sharice Wright, who made a couple plays. It was plays. right, yeah. Okay. It was right early in the year who made a couple players who looked pretty decent, and then he just fell off the team's terrible when he's starting. Okay. So, I mean, EJ Gaines, before he was injured, we were really talking about him. And, you know, a hell of a trade-off. Now, well, do you know what Do you know what his best quality is? This is one of his best qualities is his ability against the run. Uh, which is top 20 in the NFL. Um, he's a really good tackler. He's a big upgrade there, and so is Leonard Johnson. Is awesome against the run. Um, so you, you get you get a little bit of a bonus when in the run game when they're both playing. So as compared to Sharif Wright, who's just a really replacement level corner um, that he has gone all the way to getting himself scratched. Now I mean you have Lafayette Pitts getting time over him um, because of how bad you know Bright. Is and I like the guy they put on their practice squad. Well, uh, Lorenzo Doss was a guy that got cut on Thanksgiving from the uh, from the was it the Redskins? Um, so he's he's a guy that will absolutely be up on on the team. He, he's played pretty well at times. I think he'll take over Sharice Wright's spot. So 
Okay, that makes sense on why they keep adding. Um, okay, so that's cool that they're churning through some players, I guess, to, to you know, figure it out. Um, so one thing I wanted to bring up is the Bills stopped the run, right? I just want the ball in the air as much as possible. I do not care if Tom Brady throws for 700 yards. All I care about are points. I care about points. And if the guy didn't have to play football for the rest of his life, I'm down with that. So. What do you mean? It would just really suck if he got really bad turf toe and he couldn't plant his foot. And uh, you know, he had to end his career. You know what I'm saying? Um, Tom Brady. Okay. It would be really cool. So, um, I just want to see the ball in the air. If, if, if the Patriots can run, they're going to keep running the ball. They're not going to put Tom Brady up for harm's way. Trust me. They're not going to do that. They're going to run the ball. They're going to go off of New Orleans blueprint, and they're going to run the rock. I don't think Mike Gillisley will be up. That said, Belichick... Would do something like that probably because of the mental game for him. Right? Like, I don't know. Any edge you can get, you would think, right? Oh, he's got to be hungry. And if you go on a film perspective, how is he going to be used? That said, Rex Burkhead, I think, is, you know, you need the guy up too. So, um, I don't know. How, how are you looking at the Patriots' backfield as far as, uh, you know, running backs? Do, do you see. Gillisley up this week, or is he just been bad? No, I don't think so. Yeah, they, they, they have some really good talent. Scat backs. I mean, Deion Lewis has been great on first down. They're actually one of the best running teams on first down in the NFL. Um, I, I like James White as a receiving back. You know, Rex Burkheads can be, you know, scary against a linebacker, just short and quick and fast. Uh, it's just a all around. None of them on their own are particularly, like, super studly, but as a, as a four-pack, uh, it's, it's just a really good, well-designed unit. One that I wish that, you know, the Bills could kind of mimic that, where you don't need anyone spectacular behind McCoy. Um, could, that's a good piece to that, but you still need a guy, at least one more player that I think you got to take in the draft to kind of give you a little bit more depth. I agree. Um, one thing I worry about is the Patriots, you know, I don't know if I trust the the Bills linebackers. You know what I mean? You could probably say it's the Bills' weakest link on defense. Um, Would I be wrong to say that? No, I don't want to hurt their feelings, but um, I I don't know. You you talk about you're wrong to say that. I think that's you you talk about that needs to get overhauled the most. You talk about these guys in space with the Rock, and I don't. I just see a lot of passes out of the backfield. I see a lot of like swing passes, a lot of screens, a lot of little things to just get on these linebackers. They're, they're, the first thing I said when Sean McDermott was hired is, who is Luke Keekley on the Bills? Who's Luke Keekley on the Bills? You know what I mean? These guys... It, I don't know. Yeah, they're not they're not going to have a, anyone even close to Luke Keekley that they're going to need to try to find this offseason for sure. They're going to need to try their best. Yeah, I just I mean, dude, I I really like McDermott. I really like the staff. I, I like that. I like his intentions, and I spent a good amount of time kind of ripping him with my frustration. But like, man, dude, I just want this to work. That's all. So. Uh, Kevin, do you have anything else on the matchup? Because the linebackers kind of worry me. Um, What do you think about Lorenzo Alexander's role? Um, Very interesting uh, how he was used. And, you know, there was some talk that the Bills actually had some trickery, right? I think you guys were talking on your podcast. Um, Leslie Frazier showing Kansas City the same look they showed the week prior and uh, actually working out of it. You know what I mean? Into something different. So a little bit of disguise going on defensively. Um, have you noticed any of that yourself? Or Yeah, they're starting. They asked him, you know, what he prefers to do. He said rush the passer. So they're using him into like a 
Joker, like robber type of role where, you know, you're not really sure what he's going to do. So that seemed to work. I would expect that to continue. Um, he's not the greatest coverage linebacker. You know, that's not what he's going to, you know, going to do particularly well. So we got to keep him out of those situations where he's, it's really affecting him as a player to, to put him too much in coverage. It's fine on a one-off situation, but you can't have him uh, in coverage as much as we have. Uh, t- taking 156 coverage snaps throughout the, the season is way too much for me. Um, his 41.8 rank in the coverage is just is just pitiful. I mean, that's, that's bottom of the league uh, for, for co- playing coverage. So um, as compared to his really decent, you know, run defense and pass rush. So we got to keep him out of coverage. You know, man, I almost wonder about like um, a NASCAR lineup like Perry Fuel used to do. Mm-hmm. And putting just for the fuck of it, man, put him, put him down there, you know. And, and one thing I did notice, Mark also brought this up. Okay, um, the Kansas City Chiefs game, and, and I might spew some crap, and you might think I'm full of garbage, and let me know. But the game before the Chiefs, I noticed that the linebackers were like really close to the line of scrimmage, right? And it felt like that also hurt. The, the 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 middle of the defensive tackles for the Bills, right? And right. Mark also mentioned moving the linebackers back. That way they had more of a range. And the Bills adjusted and did that. And I thought they also helped shut down Hunt, both Hunts as well, in the run right. game. And, um, you know, Lorenzo Alexander, he's so fucking smart. And he knows where he's got to be. I'm glad to see the coaching staff talking to him because I'm a big ambassador for Leslie Frazier. I've, you know, your dad likes the Vikings. You know, you follow the Vikings. I, I like Leslie Frazier. He's a good dude, um, good coach, calm, collective. And and when when McDermott hired him, I'm like, okay, I can get behind this too. You know, um, and at the time, I liked the idea that I'm going out after Mike McCoy, which I actually, upon further research, might be down with, um, but. Um, so what I'm getting at here is Lorenzo Alexander was a Pro Bowl pass rusher. And say what you want about Rex's defenses. I'm telling you now, I don't see one guy that's going to be a Pro Bowl around the Bills this year, uh, except for the safeties and the cornerbacks. I think backs. you have three out of four D-backs that could. And, yeah, I mean. You're not getting a pass rusher. You know what I'm saying? No, it's, no, and probably it's like, not. No, you're probably not going to get a front seven player. I mean, um but you're going to definitely get some back end players. So, but what I'm saying here is, could no, we? I know, I, I get what you're saying. Could we be on more of like a cutting edge kind of thing here, where like, hey, you got this guy who's really good and instinctive on the field, and I'm almost thinking of like Troy Palomalu was given a. I know this is like a Hall of Famer compared to to, to Zoe, you know. But I'm just saying, it's like, all right, go down the rabbit hole, Kevin. Troy was able to have some freedom because he would bait, he would do whatever. And he was very instinctive because he would study film. He and he was just a, a hell of a player. And that's what the coaches would talk about. I was like, they kind of like let him do his thing. And I wonder if that's kind of maybe what the Bills will let Lorenzo do is because they might want him on the field because he can help make adjustments. Right. Um, he can, because he can go into coverage and he's shown that he will go into coverage. It doesn't mean he won't pick off the ball. I don't know if you stood next to him. He's a pretty mm-hmm. athletic individual, dude. He is not yeah, like but... you, you say he was over three hundred. It's like what? You know, like he's very athletic. I think he's very fast. Like so kicking him inside for some exotic looks, I always kinda wondered. I mean it's yeah. He could be bottled up, but at the same time, I don't know. He, he's played everywhere, so he understands different techniques for each position, hypothetically, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, you, you got an opportunity there with him, so um, I'd like to see him. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got his really pivotal values, and just playing him in coverage, got to get him out of his coverage snaps the best of our that we can. Um, the linebacking core, you're going to have to redo anyways. I mean, Lorenzo's making a lot of money. He's going to have to take a little bit less next year to stay. Um, Humber and, and Preston Brown are expiring contracts. Uh, you're pretty much behind them. So now, now you're talking about a reduced 
Lorenzo and then Matt Milano, who I'd love to see more of. Uh, only got 13 snaps, really good against the run. Um, he's a guy that's really developed a little bit, can play coverage. A guy I want to see kind of take over a job come toward the end of the year. He's only getting about an average of 20 snaps per game. Only had 13 last week. Um, so, you know, I want to see him get on the field more. He's kind of your future there at one of the outside linebacker hey, spots. He's a very promising player, and knowing that he's played safety, I expect to see a lot of him. I expect to see a lot of him this week. Hey, look, you have the Gronk problem, okay? And here's how I look at it. If the Bills coaching staff is smart. They're going to stop the runs. That's just football. You had to stop the run. I hate these people say, no, you got to stop the pass. Okay, dude. Okay. So, because if you if you run the ball, you control the clock, you take away opportunity, and people get impatient. That's the nature of the beast. Right. And it forces you to be one-dimensional because you're going right. to get desperate. I mean, that's really my secret to Madden is just, like, slowly chunk away. Don't get impatient because every time I'm impatient or I'll zone in on one guy, I'm going to go. His hips aren't going to turn, and it does its whatever algorithm to, like, super shoot guy to pick ball up out of the air crazy that we were talking on pre-production <laughs> about Madden. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's kind of like just settle down. Let's not get wild here. So that's kind of how I look at it, Kevin. Yep, you're looking at it properly. So, I mean, you have a guy there that, you know, in Milano that I just would love to see him start taking the next step and playing a little bit more. Um, he's proven that he should be able to, um, has pretty good stats. You know, he's got that one interception against Jameis. Um, he's earned the, the right, Kevin. 30th ranked linebacker in his limited playing time. So I think he's earned earned the right to play in this league. Um, <laughs> he just... <laughs> that was so smooth. That was so and, smooth. Yeah, I mean, just compared to, you know, Guys like, you know, Humber, who's not playing as well as he did post that injury he faced um, since he came back. He's just not playing super good football. Um, Preston Brown can really struggle at times. Both of them are ranked pretty low. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're both pretty much I, – I don't I don't extend Preston. I mean, I think Preston and Ramon are at the end of their, their line here. Hey, man, um, we, were, think- we were talking so highly of Preston Brown. At the same time, I got to be honest, man, like it, it – if your defensive line can't get the job done, is it really all Preston Brown at the same time? Yeah, he's he's got bad gap integrity. He's he's hurt. It's the other way around. He's hurting his defensive line by not making plays. Um, Could Lorenzo Alexander take that spot and move and keep Humber and Milano on the outsides? Long term or like like for the season? Like who's going to offer? The most turnover ability. That's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at Milano passing no. off Gronkowski to Hyde. Do you follow me? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's to be honest, I don't like the way he's been playing, but it's his job to end the season. So, I mean, he's got another five weeks to play middle linebacker for the Bills. They're not going to make a move before then. I mean, Lorenzo. I mean, Lorenzo and 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 Milano are your outside linebackers next year. You're going to go out and get your. You're going to go out and get a middle linebacker that's hand picked. They have to. I mean, you yeah. got those two high picks. Well, two first you, you round picks. You have a defensive picks. tackle. You have a middle linebacker. You still need a receiver. Um, you know what they need? They need a guy, and, and maybe that's the safety position and like a hide um, after a Kyle Williams. But they need like a, a you know, I, I mean, if you want to go like typical sports show or movie or sitcom we've seen play a million times, I'm looking at that middle linebacker spot. Like they need a guy. You know what I mean? A guy that's like the the the, the pretty much the Ray Lewis of their defense. The guy that's going to set the tone, and he is a McDermott guy, and he is so. I mean, what are you seeing in the draft right now? Like, who would rank? Throw you a curveball. Who would rank right at the top at the draft that could fall or top five middle linebackers that you can get? Because that could also be a second round pick as well. You know what I mean? Who who is there a Luke Keekley in the draft? Is there a fast linebacker that is smart as fuck? Yeah, there's a couple that are being talked about right now. Is um, th- we got to see who who declares. I mean, that's the first thing. Um, there's a couple of junior prospects that I know a lot of people like, and you know we're going to dive into a little bit as we get a little bit closer in the next month. Um, you know, we'll we'll do some more some more breakdowns on it but 
yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of guys I really, I really enjoyed uh, to uh, think could take that next step. I mean, Roquan Smith from Georgia. Um, he's a guy I like TJ Edwards a little bit from Wisconsin. He's another guy. Um, so you have two names right there who are top already top 25 picks. Roquan's top 10. We might even get a chance at him. Um, so those, those are a couple of inside linebacker prospects. I like Kendall Joseph from Clemson is going to be a top 50 pick. Um, so there, there's a couple of names there that could, uh, that could do what, you know, you're asking him to do. And, you know, there's, there's still a couple of names. Who, the has, who has from, from, you know, early get go here, who is the cleanest name out of the three? Like the oh, cleanest character, too. like turnkey comes in like Trey White dies into the play. But I got to say the bills nailed it with Trey White. They nailed it with Trey White. Like he fits their scheme perfectly. I think if you get a middle linebacker that can clean up the middle, that's why it's like, man, you know, I don't mind seeing an outside linebacker that's just more athletic in the middle for this game. Do you follow me? And I know it's kind of absurd, but if you got a guy who's smart like Lorenzo, I don't know. I mean, is his? I feel like his lateral speed might be better than Preston Brown, but I could also be out of my mind. You know what I mean? Like, because sometimes I think like Preston Brown's bad in coverage, and then other times I don't. You know, so um, I'm not. I don't know. It's I mean, like Ro- I'm trying Ro- to Ro- Ro- fix Ro- it. That's the name. I mean, he's going to be a premier linebacker in the NFL. Um, he's going to be your next, you know, middle linebacker. That's really good. He has four and a half sacks this year, hundred tackles in college, which is a lot. Um, just your, just your solid guy that you want to eat your hands on. Um, if he's anywhere near, he's a junior. If he's anywhere near your draft board, you go out and get him. There's a couple outside linebackers I really like too, um, and we can do a draft pod in a couple weeks or a month or you know maybe in January. Um, Dorian O'Daniel from Clemson, another Clemson guy. They've got two linebackers worth drafting. And Malik Jefferson, obviously from Texas. So you got about five or six linebackers, which is, I think, more than normal for your top fifty. They got to figure it out, man. Um, draft, holy shit! I can't even do it. I'm sorry to take us down that road, guys. Um, a little earlier, actually, not earlier. We've had a good few seasons as far as not having to talk draft super early. Um, so. Kevin, anything else on this matchup? Uh, I, I really try to hammer it out. I, look, I, I I think the Bills can do it. All right, if I'm going to say the Bills do it, like I was saying, complete passes. Complete passes, open up that run, and come out looking different than you have, please. Don't come at Bill Belichick with the same old bullshit, okay? That's all I'm saying, Kevin. Stop it. Just stop it now. Agreed. Spread yep. them out, baby. Let's run out of the spread. I just picture slow and steady Fred just through holes. Boom. You know what I mean? It ain't rocket science. It can't be that hard. And then Tyrod Taylor can see more as well. Right? And then he doesn't have the chance as much of a collapsed pocket. That's three. Let's see three receivers out there. I mean... Is there any major injuries on the receiving side of the ball besides Calvin Benjamin? Nope, you're good to go there. So, um, how is, on the last note for you, how has Jordan Matthews looked? Slow. I mean, he doesn't look great to me. I mean, he's someone, probably one of the most disappointed I've been with somebody. It's not that he does anything wrong. It's just that he just doesn't do anything at all. So, um, he's been disappointing to me. I'm going to put my notes, uh, that. Dot, dot. So, dude, I made like two pages and one line of notes here. This is so crazy. Okay, so, fam, thank you for coming on here, Kevin. Uh, what do you have going on at Lockdown Bills? Do you want to clue us in? Just dropped a great pod with Mark Schofield from Lockdown Pats. Really good guy, really good followers. Go give him a shot. Um, he's. Uh, just a premier guy thinks pretty highly of the Bills, so go listen to our Lockdown Bills, Lockdown Patriots. He's got a lot of good knowledge. Um, gives a couple of ways that the Bills could win this game, so check that pot out. Um, just our crossover shows weekly. Been a big hit, and just you know, I'm you know, I'm on I'm on over there, Lockdown Bills, three times a week. Kevin, I will say, uh, not just because we're boys, but I love your podcast. I love doing it. Um, I love seeing you actively doing it. 
Like it's got to be. It's a hell of a grind, man. Doing three podcasts, having to do be a part of that. Like that's crazy for lockdown. So, um, you know, and Nate Geary does some great stuff too. Um, yeah, he is. He's he's a great dude. He's a, he's on air. You know, he's you know, in a sense, he's uh, made it in a way. You know, he's on local radio stations, so uh, he's he's great at what he does and. Someone I enjoy hanging out with at, you know, when I get to see him at, at camp or other functions. And, and, you know, too, I'll tell you what, man. A lot of people like to bash on WGR and talk mad shit, right? But people had to understand the industry that they're in, which is right. quarterback does pay the bills. You have to pay yep. the bills. Ads pay the bills, okay? And yep. I could sit here and rip whatever, and some people hate the morning show, love the morning show. Some people hate both shows, morning and evening. But I will say one thing with that company is – if you put in work like Sal Capaccio, I used to listen to Sal mm-hmm. Capaccio's podcast be- before we started this one because I just couldn't find any info. And that's before John Murphy had a show, and I would refresh my feed all the time, man. And, and you know, Sal would have, like, a pretty well-produced show that he'd put on. He had a producer. Um, he had, like, some Bill Steen music. For me, it was a little bit too over the top, but... it. Like he was doing it, and and how can I say that? Because he's got a job doing what he loves to do, and now he's on the Bill sideline. And a guy like that for me is a is a big like, hey man, you can do whatever you want, you know. And it's like he's a big influence and should be for some good people. And he's great coverage, and he'll go against the grain. He's a good source. Follow Sales Sports. He's a really good source because whether you agree or disagree with the personalities on the radio or not. He can. He will give his outright, honest opinion with whatever take they're going. He's a good person for me to ding my information to. And I'll tell you what, Nate Geary, I texted that kid a couple of years ago or hit him up. I was like, dude, man, you're my radio man crush. Like, seriously, like, you got a lot going on for you. And I met him through the Bills Fanatics get-together thing after uh, training camp uh, two seasons ago and or last season. And, man, Nate's the real deal. Really good kid, and uh, I hate to even say he's a kid. He's a really good man, and he's gone through a lot of shit. You know, that he doesn't advertise on the Facebook with the cancer stuff, like which, like, dude, that's fucking crazy. Like, I didn't even know. You know what I mean? Yep. And, like, he's a good dude, and he works his ass off, and he's really passionate, and he'll tell you how he sees it, and he's another guy that just, again, WGR tosses him an opportunity. He takes it and runs with it. Like, he grinds. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, I've been working seven days a week for, you know, with the bill stuff. Like, it's hard work. I don't think that these guys at the radio are making much money. I had a conversation with someone who shall not be named, and I was like, dude, man, I would go sell my soul for X amount an hour. And he goes, sure. yeah, dude, you ain't getting that. I'm like, really? He's like, no. Nah. And it's like, what? Like, it's it's crazy. It's all big money and, you know, enter a big radio name here that I'm not going to slander. Um, so it's like, you know, it's not necessarily WGR. It's the people above who own these media corporations. Why, you know, things are the way they are on the radio. And some guys cut it real. Some guys go with the flow. And, and I got to say, like, Nate Geary and Sal, they cut it really real. Um, I think that... that Bulldog and and Shope, like people have mixed opinions. Personally, for me, I think they cut it pretty raw. They're kind of in a disagreement about Tyrod right now, which is cool. So it's nice to listen to that here and there to get a pulse. And Howard and Jeremy take it or leave it. Howard's kind of getting it that it might be the coaches, but they're still hung up on quarterback. And my whole thing is, if you don't have an offensive line that can block for your quarterback, good luck saying quarterback because. This Nathan Peterman experiment, Buffalo fans don't have enough fucking patience to let a quarterback develop. The only way they're doing that is with the guy that is already seasoned and groomed that could step in that's elite, and they're willing to give up picks. I'm talking an Andrew Luck or somebody crazy that they can get picks for, and and that could even be maybe a, a Teddy Bridgewater if he doesn't stay with Minnesota or a Sam Bradford if you trust he's not going to get hurt. Somebody where you have a few years to let a quarterback develop because there's no way that a guy comes in his rookie year and it better not come in with Denison staff, honestly, to, to develop a quarterback. I don't want that. So um, I don't know how the hell I got into this off of radio shows. But uh, essentially, you have your personalities that you like and you don't like. And Nate Gear is a good source. So 
that yeah, I, I agree. He's a good kid. Um, but that that's what I have on the the docket, Dave. So uh, looking forward to the next show. Yeah, man. Wow, I really talked myself into uh, quarterback somehow in about two seconds by myself, Kevin. Good work. Thank you. So, as always, as I digress into nothing, thank you to Grandstand Sports Network dot com. Shout out to Eric Turner at Cover One. As always, follow along there for your Bills analytic analytics. I will say the truth behind the Bills. Okay, you got to look at these players. Is Ones and zeros, X's and O's. Don't look at them like passion, okay? And that's why you can talk me into Peterman, kinda, for that game. Like, you know, maybe we can properly evaluate the offense. Yeah, that offensive line, it ain't working for him. No, oh, maybe he is too young and hasn't taken live bullets yet. Maybe this isn't the game to start him. Hmm. And you kind of come out with more questions than you do answers. So, you know... At cover one, they keep it real. And I love my real answers, Kevin. So it's great that you get to work right along with that and do lockdown bills and have the power of pro football focus as a sponsor. And that's pretty rad for you. So follow along on pro football focus if you don't already with them. So also punchdrunksports.com and uh, follow them. Punch Drunk Sports. Subscribe. And I'm your host, David Palermo. And email me, David Numb Bills fan. Have anything you want to say? You want to come on air? You got a good take? Don't suck, as Jim Rome would say. Let me know. Send me a video. Maybe I'll post it on the website. So, as always, on behalf of uh, Grandstand Sports, Punch Drunk Sports, thank you. And uh, please subscribe. Check back for a post-game show. Might squeeze a fantasy football one in with Mike Smitty. So, Kevin, anything else? I think I'm done here with my 10-minute outro. That's it for me. Great coming on as always. Thanks, Kevin. All right. See you guys. Should try clicking that first.